Hey y'all, hi. So my makeup tastes have changed dramatically. And I've even been getting some comments about it. Like I'm talking about wanting a super desaturated, barely there blush. And people are in the comments like, aren't you the girl who used to love really bright blush draping? And I'm like, hmm, yes, hmm. So what's going on? I'm not exactly sure. This is one of those videos where we may have more questions than answers. Love to see it. But I have some theories. So in this video, I'm going to talk first about how my makeup tastes have changed. Then I will put forth a couple of my theories. And of course, I'm looking forward to hearing what you think too. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope this is an okay first video for you to be watching. It might be kind of chatty. In some of my videos, especially lately, I try to insert pictures, have some B-roll, keep it lively. This might be a little bit talky, but who knows? Maybe it'll come together snappily and we'll have a bunch of illustrative images to pop into it. One can only hope. If you do end up liking it, I hope that you'll subscribe. I'm Anna, I make videos about fashion and beauty and aesthetics overall. I'm fascinated by aesthetics and I feel like actually this, this topic is in its way a really interesting part of the vast case study in contemporary aesthetics that I'm conducting here on my YouTube channel, Hannah Louise Boston. All right, that's enough. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, up first, how have my tastes changed? What is it that we're all noticing, that some of you are noticing and that I'm noticing? I mean, for a lot of us, tastes do change. They fluctuate a little bit, right? They fluctuate over time and then they change back. We go through seasons, personal seasons of preferences and trends. Sometimes I'm more into eye makeup and I'm really light on the lips and sometimes I swing back and I'm wearing really heavy lipstick and nothing on my eyes. And I've learned over time not to take any of those seasons too seriously because change always comes again. But I feel like recently I've experienced, not even that recently, it's like over the past year, maybe even more, I've experienced a radical about face in some of my tastes in makeup specifically. And it feels like it's lasting for longer than one of those passing fancies. So much so that I'm starting to wonder if I'll ever go back. And that's why I'm making this video. So these are to put as fine a point on it as I can. These are the specific changes that I've noticed. Number one, my mascara preferences seem to have changed like a complete 180. I used to notoriously only want the gunkiest, splinkiest, not just buildable length and volume, but for it to build so much that my lashes looked sort of painterly and graphic, like a graphic element on my face, even when I was wearing pretty light makeup otherwise. I was always building a lot of physical makeup onto my lashes and I wanted that fibrous, kind of spidery, textured length and volume. I still think that length and volume are great, but these days I've been craving a wispy lash, a pretty natural lash. I've even been talking about wanting like a taupe or light brown mascara that doesn't even look as much like makeup as black mascara does on me. And it's been a really long time since I felt that proclivity to build mascara on my lashes until they were so built up, so heavy, that they themselves, just they, they alone, were carrying the drama. A year or so ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I can't remember when it was that it, it first occurred to me that, there, that I might have a use for a wispy lash. But if we go back a full two years, I was a person who was like, wispy lashes? Ha, huh, I don't know her. And now that's what I'm after every day. Radical change number two, eye makeup in general. I'm just craving a lighter look. So it used to be that when I really went in with eye makeup, there would be a lot of layers. I was the queen of layering in sort of this oil slicky way, always using lots of black in the outer corner and to line my eyes, bringing the shape way up high to help open up my eyes and make my eye area seem bigger. I mean, I think that I, I still think that all of what I was doing had merit. I mean, I think that the techniques I was using were working in exactly the way that I wanted them to. And on an artistic task, tactile level, I still deeply appreciate that. I mean, I, I very much understand my past self. It's just that I'm slowly realizing that it's my past self. It's been a very long time since I sat down and I was like, today I'm going to do those oil slick eyes. It's been months since I reached for a black eyeshadow. And every time I've done my eye makeup, I think I can say for months, with maybe some except a few, very few exceptions, I've been going for one and done, like I have on today, just one shadow. And I haven't even been taking very many pains to build structure on my eyes by darkening the outer corner, which is a step that I never used to skip. What I'm going for 
these days is more just the way that my eyes look with a little bit of a wash of color on them rather than a dramatic iridescent beetle wing oil painting on my eyes totally changing their size and shape and sort of structure and overall effect of them, which I used to do like in daily life. Change number three that I've noticed as I indicated in the introduction, all I've wanted from blush lately is for it to be really natural and desaturated, to go with my desaturated skin tone so that I feel like there's sort of a soft shadowing on my cheeks, but not bright color. I used to love like super draped, super strong cheeks, not in every tone, but in the tones that I did love, I would sometimes go really hard with blush. I still love blush. It's still like maybe the best part of makeup for me, but I'm finding that I want it to look like it could have come from my skin, like look like it is of me, no matter how heavily or lightly I'm applying it, rather than having it look like makeup. Like it's a, a strong makeup-y feature or a, a makeup statement that I'm making on my face. And that leads me to the fourth and final change that I've written on this list, which just has to do with color overall. I've just been wanting less saturated color overall, less contrast with my natural palette and a more minimalist color palette overall. So beiges, taupes, browns. Bronze has always been my favorite, but I feel like in the past, bronze has been sort of holding down the fort on the more natural end of the spectrum of the makeup that I would regularly do. Lately, that spectrum has sort of collapsed down to the bronze end. Everything else that has changed recently feels somewhat seasonal, like feels like a little bit of, of a smaller, maybe more temporary change. I'm currently really into a strong lip as long as there's not too much makeup elsewhere on the face. That's something that I have been into in the past intermittently, like off and on for years. Still into strong brows if I can get them. I've always been after a relatively light base look, you know, not too much foundation. That's all stuff that I'm into now, but that doesn't feel all that different from what I've always done. But oil slick eyes, spidery mascara, blush draping, and strong use of color, those were pillars of my makeup style for years here on my YouTube channel. And having them totally switched out for basically the opposite of them has shocked me and <laughs> shocked some of you. And I think the thing that's shocked us the most is that it kind of feels like they aren't switching back anytime soon. So what is this? Like when I back up and I look at it and I try to paint the bigger picture, what is going on? The answer has something to do with the difference between makeup as statement making art supplies and makeup as an element of integrated natural style. The real sea change for me is that I have become less interested in dramatic, artistic, makeup for daily wear and more interested in makeup choices that enhance my overall look but without being the focal point. So why? This is the big question. This is the second part of the video. Why am I doing this? Why am I now finding myself almost every day of my makeup wearing life turning away from drama and towards subtlety when in the past I was someone who really loved dramatic makeup? And I mean, I think I am someone who does still really love dramatic makeup for its own sake. But in the past, I was someone who took advantage of the moment of putting on makeup every day to experiment with dramatic makeup. And now I would say that I love it for its own sake, but every day of my makeup wearing life, I'm choosing subtlety instead of drama. Why? Here are the possibilities as I see them. This is the list that I've brainstormed. Reason number one, aging. I know that I sometimes talk with the lingo, the, li the lingo of the young, and you know, these beauty lights, these beauty lights are bay. They really do a lot for a person, but the reality is that I'm 38 years old. In two years, I'll be 40. To be very, very clear, I do not think that there is such a thing as makeup that is too young for a person. The idea of a 40-year-old woman wearing black blush draping or oil slick eyes or dramatic makeup of any kind. It does not feel wrong to me or not chic or in any way like a bad choice. One of my favorite things is when I see makeup models in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond in really dynamic looks in advertising and in fashion. And I hope that we will continue to see more of that. So it's not as though it's a matter of principle for me or some sense of what's appropriate, like a sense of propriety 
propriety. But what is true for me on the face that I have is that heavier makeup doesn't sit as well on my skin as it did even just five years ago. My eyelids and my cheeks and, you know, this area around my eyes, all of it has more texture. And there are ways to build makeup up in those places and to execute those dramatic looks and still have it look great. But they're different than the old ways, you know? And it, but it's not even that. It's, I just feel less inclined to. I feel less inclined to coat those parts of my face with makeup. And I feel less inclined to pile mascara onto my lashes. And it's partly because I'm trying to treat them gently. My lashes don't feel as thick and hardy as they once were. I think that maybe part of what's happening is that I'm subconsciously adjusting for all of these minute changes that are taking place on my face over time and starting to shift towards makeup that just isn't as rough on my face. Okay, possible culprit number two, lifestyle. So Joe and I have started going out dancing tango a little bit more lately, which has been amazing. And I've noticed that one of the fun things about getting ready to go out dancing is that I find myself pulling out my more dramatic eye makeup. Multi-chromes, glitter gels, you know, like the shiny, glittery, smeary stuff that I used to wear a lot more frequently than I do now. And when I do that, I realize how long it's been since I felt like the moment was right for that kind of makeup. I really enjoy doing it on those occasions, which again have been a little bit more frequent lately. So it's not as though I don't feel right in those oil slick eyes anymore. It's just that every time I make up my eyes for tango, I think, well, it's been a long time since I attended any events for which this kind of makeup made sense. Back in LA, before the pandemic, it wasn't just tango that gave me a reason to put on more statement makeup like that. I was going to beauty events, parties, shows, having people over to our house. In LA, even just going out to dinner would be an occasion for a really strong creative eye look or blush draping. And wherever we went out to dinner, there would be other people in the restaurant wearing maybe not exactly the same thing, but similar levels of flair somewhere on their faces and bodies. It was more the culture to do that sort of thing. Here, where I live now, my life is really a quiet life inside our house. I spend half of every day working on my writing, the other half of every day working on the YouTube channel, and I still really love fashion and makeup, and I really enjoy getting ready every day. But everything just feels more more peaceful and gentle. And I don't know, less like something that requires glitter. When we do go out, I'm often the most dressed up person at the party or in the restaurant, just based on my outfit, like even if I'm wearing no makeup makeup. And it's not that I mind not fitting in to the culture. I mean, the environment here is not keeping me from wearing my best clothes, even though I sometimes end up overdressed. But in this new setting, it's like the role of makeup has just shifted. I still love it. I still love reviewing it. I still relish it. But I think that I'm looking for something a little bit different from it most of the time. Possible culprit number three, my experiments with wardrobe minimalism. So over the past six months, I've been experimenting with aesthetic minimalism in my closet. It started with a video that I made last year. I tried a strict minimalist wardrobe for a month. Of course, I'll link that and I'll put it in the cards. It was partly about working from a smaller closet for a month, like capsule wardrobe adjacent kind of thing. But mostly it was about letting go of maximalism in my personal daily fashion adventures and letting the shape colors, and vibes of aesthetic minimalism take over. And you know what? I loved it way more than I thought that I would. Like, way more. And I've continued to love it. I've pretty much stayed in it. I think that having an eye for print mixing and appreciation for the really splashy, loud, dramatic elements of editorial fashion has, for most of my life, made me feel compelled to incorporate that kind of flair into my own personal aesthetic, my own way of dressing. But I've always felt my absolute very best, my most powerful, in clothing that has, maybe you'd say, like, 
like a slightly masculine edge. And I don't mean that like menswear. I'm just talking aesthetically and I'm using the word masculine to mean yang, like hard with an edge, with sh- with sharpness. And what I realized when I cut all of the maximalism loose from my closet, what I realized was that there's still a lot of drama and character in the way that I end up executing minimalism. In fact, my private theory that I'm currently developing, my private theory is that my natural tendency is towards drama and character. So it's like there in anything I do, almost like in spite of me. So when I pile lots of dramatic flourish on top of that in the form of lots of print and color, for example, it becomes quite a lot quite quickly. And for me, the constraints of aesthetic minimalism have made my fashion sense bloom. And I wonder if what's happening now is that those same aesthetic principles, those same lessons are starting to bleed over into my relationship with makeup. And that I'm unconsciously starting to interact with makeup in a similar way. Using a lighter touch, going with more neutrals and prioritizing fluidity and simplicity with occasional moments of drama that stand out all the more and all the more cleanly because they're against a calmer, simpler backdrop. And lastly, theory number four, I wonder if my work as a beauty influencer could be influencing me in turn and could be part of what is currently sculpting my relationship with makeup. I mean, it seems absurd to think that it wouldn't be doing that. Over the past five years, as beauty work has become more and more a part of my daily work until eventually it became my full-time job, I've just been more and more steeped in makeup. I've gone through way more products and ideas for looks and experiments and thought experiments way more intensively and up close than I ever would have in my entire life if I hadn't gone down this career path. And I wonder if that intensity has caused me to kind of burn through like 20 years worth of experimenting with makeup in five years. What I'm left with is a really strong appreciation for elegant formulas and well-balanced, sophisticated colors and very little patience for hype and gimmicks and trashy like flash in the pan things. It's like these five years have been a whirlwind tour of the beauty industry sort of from the inside out. It's left me feeling like most people just want makeup that works beautifully and that looks beautiful and that has a specialness about it and that helps them feel more like themselves without necessarily taking over their lives. And in coming to feel that way, it's like I've kind of come to be that makeup wearer too. I can't know for sure, but I wonder if an alternate universe Hannah who had never started her own YouTube channel might still be more obsessed with long, thick, spidery eyelashes than I am now, you know? I can't know for sure, but I wonder. So those are my four theories. Maybe just my first four, you know, more might occur to me. And of course, probably what's going on is some combination of all four. And it also occurs to me to say that now that I've made this video, I feel like I'm probably going to wake up tomorrow morning, like wanting to wear lavender eyeshadow all over my eyes or something. That could happen, you know, anything could happen. I feel like this is valid. Like the context of this video feels pretty solid to me, but (laughs) as always, I'll be following my future career with some interest. And what I want to ask is a lot of you have been here with me the whole time or you've gone back from the beginning and you've seen all of this change happen much faster as you've watched through my videos than it has happened for me. So you might even have a better perspective than I do. So I would love to know what you think, but I'm even more curious to know if you have observed your own tastes changing over time. Not just small shifts in the direction of the wind, but like a permanent and maybe surprising sea change similar to the sort of thing that I've experienced and that I have described in this video. And if that has happened to you, what has it looked like? And what do you think have been the reasons for that change? I'm so curious to know what this has been like for all of you. Thank you, of course, for watching this video. I really, really appreciate you for being here. Please like and comment and subscribe and all of that business. But most of all, please remember to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.